Hey, what's up, fam? Honestly, I was not expecting a lot of the stuff that went on within this chapter, Eden Zero, chapter 33, The Girl on the Hill. Now, I'd say there was only one part I really expected, which I'll get to when we get there, but obviously it started out just where we left off. Shiki is now pretty mad that uh, Jimilov just killed all of these uh, NPCs in the game. Actually, I think they were players. Yeah, they were players, and... They didn't log out in time, they actually ended up dying, and obviously if you die in the uh, in Digitalis, you die in reality. So, like, these guys all just skewered up on top of this building. That was it for them. It's over. You know, GG no re. It's pretty vicious, like, quickly off the bat. Obviously, it's not, like, super dark and gory, but just the fact that the, the arc started out like this really is... It, it's it's uh it, it's got to get the blood going it's got to get everything kind of flowing and pumping get everything excited for what else is to come but jamilov i thought he looked way more intimidating uh without the pupils uh, i thought the same thing kind of when here machine like how he has the the dragons i think they look way more intimidating when they don't have uh pupils and they're just kind of these blanked one colored eyes but it's same thing with jamilov i mean he still looks He's still intimidating because he just looks like a spooky, mass-murdering psycho. But I definitely think he should have left out the uh, left out the pupils. But he actually pulls out his scythe, uh, he, who he's calling Maria, which turns into this kind of like large energy maw. And something I actually uh, am very curious about that I was surprised is that Shiki had a bunch of his hair bitten off by the you know the scythe creature and eaten. And I'm wondering. If, because we had it the first time, and now we have it again. If this could potentially be like an ongoing joke, uh, maybe it, something happens that makes Shiki's hair grow out every once in a while, and then it, in the middle of a fight shortly after, it ends up, uh, you know, getting damaged. Even the first one was like a fight. Well, I think that would be an interesting kind of uh, running joke. Uh, hopefully, it happens again to prove that whole bit, but right now, you know, we still are at two. I, I personally like the long-haired Shiki a lot more, especially when you look on the very first panel. I don't know, I just think it, he looks way cooler with, like, that one eye covered in the long, like, uh, scrangly hair, but... Uh, Jamilov's Maria goes around, and it just seems to kind of, like, be dusting buildings. Like, it just kind of, like, rips them apart with, like, these... Uh, this dark energy. I thought it was maybe like a, a mini chronophage for a, you know, a split second. But, and I didn't have that same kind of this like time mockery and just complete overpowered hacks since it just looked like, you know, weird energy weapon. Still pretty intimidating, but I actually really like this panel because it's just the way that like Shiki's using the environment to fight. Like he just grabs this building, obviously he's got his he himself is pretty much flying because of his uh, anti-gravity he's doing, and then he can increase weight or throw the building just off of his strength or his ether gear and just throws it right into Jamilov, and he doesn't seem damaged at all. He's actually just kind of sort of crouching, and even though he wanted to continue the, you know, the, this bout, he can't really say no to Drak and Joe while he's being summoned, so he ends up kind of like you know getting him for a rain check so he can come back and logs out of the game. But it just it just looks like even though they they got him to leave, there was still a fair amount of damage. Like the guy just he didn't leave anyone feeling safe or settled. And even when they they left, I feel like you you'd think just assuming in the game that you're going to spawn back where you you know you spawned out. Just uh, assuming you know once you you know you log out of a video game. Assuming this is like a lot of MMORPGs. You log out of a video game. When you log back in, you're gonna be exactly where you were. So if that's the case, when Jamilov comes back, he's gonna be in that town again. So I don't know what those uh what those townsfolk are really like. It, it, they seem kind of relieved, and it just at that point you're just probably gonna be like, well, all he did really did was. Uh, keep us alive, hopefully, for, you know, X amount of time before he comes back and starts murdering us again. But they end up finding a uh, hermit who's up on, you know, that hill. And she's just sitting there kind of, like, thinking to herself. And she's actually a little bit intrigued on um, on Eden Zero. And I'm thinking maybe it has to do um, in, in relation to how she was originally found. Because after she n notes Eden Zero, I actually see a like a cave off in the distance with very similar landscape. So I'm wondering if, if that is a cave, you know, just kind of being foreshadowed that there's something going to be in there, 
or you know it was just kind of like a, a very quick memory flash and it would be have something to do with maybe like ziggy finding hermit maybe like maybe she was an npc in the game and then she wanted to go out in the real world so maybe like ziggy had a body made for her and that's where he found her in the cave i don't know but it's definitely interesting there's gonna be something related to that either way but she just seems to have this very big hatred on humans and i'm wondering what exactly it's gonna be it's hopefully going to be answered within the arc kind of pertained to what's going on my guess is that uh maybe if she was uh maybe she was like an npc that got you know free after becoming sentient she went to the real world she realized that humans just kind of want to demolish digitalis even though it's it's not physical it's just kind of there it, it could be a potential threat you know you have all these uh intelligent sentient ai programs something bad can go wrong but uh, it definitely it definitely intrigued in her reasoning i mean it's not a it's not a brand new concept that's you know some grumpy characters want to cooperate for you know hatred of x uh group but the reasoning i, I think was what hammers it in uh, even though it's it seems pretty out of nowhere we haven't had i don't think any any characters in the series that have like a direct hatred for one uh i, I don't want to say species or race i guess more like classification because we also have you know the the androids you know you get aliens and uh, humans, and then I don't, I don't know what else we're going to start pulling in, but definitely a little interested in how it's going to play out. Now, the really interesting thing is at the end, um, because Homura, who apparently stayed behind to, you know, do some research, ends up go running into somebody, and that somebody happens to be, if I, I believe, just kind of really quick looking, if you, uh, if you look at the Eden Zero character roster, the only character that we haven't really got any information on yet is the dude with the kind of bowl cut hair you know black he hangs out with elsie and that's who it is apparently he is homura's uh younger brother and he asks her about the infiltration into the eden zero team so that could mean that homura is actually working for elsie or maybe it's um this dude jesse and homura working as you know a, a a third faction and all this so i didn't expect to see that coming at all i figured there'd be you know the fight there you know you get up to hermit there'd be some form of confrontation or issue like it, it had a lot of what i assumed you know what could be in there just going off of a hypothesis of you know we're still in the beginning arc there's not going to be any big revelations yet any big kind of like reveals or twists but we definitely got i would say the bro like the just the tip of what could be a really big reveal and what's going on with Tamora and Jesse. So definitely really excited about that. I'm ex I really want to see how that goes down because his character, he looks, he just looks nefarious and like he's up to no good. You know, he's trying to, you know, he's trying to start a little trouble in their neighborhood, but he himself, I, I just don't trust. And I'm, I am very curious now, are we going to get kind of like a Jalal backstab or maybe it is Elsie who you know is this infamous space pirate this villain who let him off pretty easy because she owed ziggy a debt but could you know because of that you know letting him up easy she's just like well turn around and you know plant a bug inside of his team you know plant Amora. i don't know we'll figure it out probably the next couple of chapters for now i'm more interested in what exactly drac and joe is is planning because obviously he's calling back his subordinates or i don't know if it's even going to be subordinates or maybe just like business partners or what you know these characters will be relation to him will be but it's got to be something big because he's you know he's this big deal he's like a warlord of uh, of the cosmos so we'll figure that out hopefully soon other than that uh, drop a comment below what you thought about this chapter uh it actually ran it went, like the first half went by really fast and then just kind of slowed down to like a nice comfortable couple reveals and setups which i thought was nice i thought that was pretty good but like i said drop a comment below on what you thought about this chapter and uh, i really appreciate it if you would thumbs up the like button you know befriend the like button and subscribe for more and check out my other videos other than that i appreciate everyone who's already subscribed and i thank you all for listening bye